Jefferson County Prosecuting Attorney Matt Harvey. Good morning. Also appointed to the West Virginia First Foundation. Yes. Local, local uh, what would you call that, board of directors locally? Would you, the First the Foundation way to, Board. Right, to phrase that? Yes, yes. Former Delegate John Doyle also in studio. Hi there. He's got his coffee. He's ready to go. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> and you're back tomorrow, too, for the Friday I show. am. Yeah, Larry Schultz is out. John I've, Doyle is in. I've got that seat that's slowly sinking. Are you uh, sinking in the quicksand seat? Yeah, who's switched me chairs? Uh, I don't know. I, it may oh, have been I like that from yesterday. Wrong. Yeah, I think well, it was Ron. You know, there's one to your right. You can always switch. I out. Yeah, at the next break, you can just switch chairs with that empty one to the right. <laughs> the quicksand seat. Our guest in the studio <laughs> is the superintendent of schools in Berkeley County, Ron Stevens. Uh, Ron will be appearing on a semi-regular basis with us uh, throughout the school year. We're pleased to make that announcement. Thanks to Elaine Bobo for setting that up from uh, Berkeley County Schools. Ron, good morning. Good morning. How is everybody? Splendid. Yourself? Well, uh, we've had a good start to the year. We're making it through... Uh, the uh, week after Labor Day, so I'm I'm feeling pretty good about it. And the heat in terms of the schools are all of your schools air conditioned, or are some still without? I, I, they are all uh, air conditioned, um, but we have had some issues, as has uh, a number of people in my neighborhood and mm-hmm. <laughs> um, the community. Compressors uh, blowing out. Everybody, everybody's uh, air is working overtime right now. Yeah. 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 Mine mine blew out in March when I had my just a regular routine checkup and i was fortunate that we did that because otherwise i can't imagine it yeah. blowing up now <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know? ha- having it go out when it's in the 90s the upper 90s uh is is tough and we've had regions um you know thank goodness for the patience of our of our uh, our staff and our students because it's it's been challenging a little bit what about the school buses uh school buses do not uh, and uh, you know our drivers deal with that on a regular basis every year at this time. It's 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 tough. Um, it, yeah, yeah, it's just tough. Uh, you can remember what it was like riding on a school bus when uh, when we were young. There was no air then either. So no, there it's, wasn't. <laughs> it's been it's uh, that is a challenge. Yeah. Uh, so how long has it been since all the schools have been air conditioned, Ron? Do you know? I don't know. I don't has know. Has it been that long? Question. Um, I don't know the answer to that. Well, it's a good thing that they are, at least. Yeah. Know, right? Yeah. Uh, COVID has made a return in society. Not that it ever went away, but I guess there's more cases now than there had been in the past. Is it something you're seeing in the Berkeley County school system? I, I think that we're reflective of the community as a whole and, and you know, the, the region. Uh, we, we have seen some. Um, I mean, certainly not to the level that we were before, but, um, you know, I don't think I don't think people are reporting quite like they did before and are keeping track of it. But, you know, I, I do know people that have had it who have it. And it is um, it's just just as bad when you get it now as, as it was when you got it uh, before. Are the protocols for it much different than they were three years ago? Are you basically treating it like the common cold now? Um, yes and no. Uh, protocols. Uh, are laid out by the by the health department and and by our uh, state department of education. There's there's still recommended um, timelines if if you're if you have COVID, uh, and it depends on if you're you know how long you've had it, when you were exposed to it, if you have symptoms. There's a there's a variety of things in a checklist. And maybe how serious the, the symptoms are. Um, no. It, it, yeah. You know, it, just having the symptoms make you okay. make you contagious. So, okay. Okay. Um, you know, how once the symptoms start to get better, then the timeline starts. So, you know, if you have s- severe symptoms, of course, it may take you a little bit longer to okay. to get to that point. But, okay. um, yeah, there there's a set of uh, guidelines that we have on our yeah. on our web page for any any parents uh, or students out there that have questions. You can look that up. Are you getting any reports of schools having absences greater than you might expect on a regular basis? Anyway, we we are tracking, um, you know, what what's reported to us, um, but we're, you know, we're we're within the norm. Mm-hmm. We're within, we're within the norm right now, and um, you know, I I do think that there's like I said, there's there's absences out there due to it, but um, uh, we we haven't had a uh, a whole school or a whole classroom that's that's had to be addressed yet mr harvey <clears throat> well there's been a lot of news about the, the school system with with uh an incident that happened how in looking back now what has it been a week or two well 
Mr. Harvey, uh, it's good to meet you this morning. It makes me nervous when somebody opens up a notebook and is ready to ask me a bunch of questions. Well, he's a prosecuting attorney. Yeah. yeah. He's a, it's just, it's just, a, bunch, it's just a bunch of doodles. Not, not, not just a lawyer, but a prosecutor. <laughs> yeah. So I, I just want to be clear, which which situation are you referring to? Uh, the one that created the uh, – there was a fake threat. Okay. At, okay. Yes. At, at one yes, of our One of our middle schools. Okay. Yes, so um, – Yes. Then to answer your question, that is a situation that happened last week, and um, it, it was it wasn't a fake threat. Uh, it, there was a it turned out to be unfounded, but there was a threat made towards one of our students um, who reported it then to the school administrator, and and throughout uh, a period of about two hours, it went from a threat directed towards a student to um they may be approaching the area looking for the student uh, we we had a number of cooperating law enforcement agencies from you know our local um, and i could never remember the whole name of the task force the the uh, the uh, drug and violent crime task force that we have here that's made up of state police um, um local City, Jefferson County Sheriff's Department, Berkeley County Sheriff's Department, City Police here, um, along with the FBI. Um, they worked to solve the online portion of that while the local authorities uh, and Chief Gibbons of Martinsburg's uh, Police Department worked to make sure that the school was safe. So um, in a matter of two hours, this is amazing uh, if you think about it, in a matter of two hours, there was a, there was a threat made to a student in Berkeley County, West Virginia, by a student in Michigan, a 10-year-old student in Michigan. Wow. And in a matter of two hours, we had secured our property, made sure that the school was safe, made sure that the students were safe, uh, dealt with uh, nervous parents, as I would have been as well, um, and had law enforcement, was cooperating with law enforcement in Michigan and had somebody at the, uh, at the location in, in two hours. At so, the location in Michigan. At Michigan, yes. Yeah. So with a ten-year-old. Uh, yeah. Wow. With a t with, the, with a ten-year-old who I understand had made these threats, made multiple threats, and it was through the cooperation with the West Virginia's uh, branch of our task force and the FBI connections that we had, were able to um, to get somebody there because other areas were being frustrated; they couldn't track it down. Wow. So, so and it was their first day of school, and he was at home alone. So in the wake of that. Um, with the teachers and the, the students and the, the parents, has has it kind of gotten back to normal? Uh, are they appreciative of how of the swift response from all the local authorities? You know that's that's a trick question, and and I, I can't speak for, you know the there there were over a thousand people that were faced with dealing with that, and you know from nervous and. Um, and anxious parents who were showing up because they were getting messages from from students who didn't actually know what was going on but were you know nervous um, all the way through to the law enforcement uh, officers who were on site who were dealing with things I think that overall we've had a very positive response the, the people that we've talked to were thankful that that we went through this they were amazed that uh, the level of cooperation that we we worked with uh to be able to f actually to be able to find somebody in michigan from from here um you know it just shows that we do take every threat seriously um it we're unable to share at the exact second uh that that some people want to, want to hear about that uh because it's an ongoing investigation while that's going uh, while it's going down but um i i think that our school employees did a great job. The students did a good job. Our staff did a super job at, at um, keeping the students in class and, and um, maintaining order there. And uh, I think since then, they have been able to get back to normal, yeah. Sur service personnel and teachers, um, is there a shortage in Berkeley County, and, and are you able to manage this year? <laughs> um, 
These aren't trick questions. No, they're, 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 they're not. Trick. These I'm not are trying very to trick good you. questions. I'm just trying to. I know what. Mr. Harvey, these are on point because you are making no. points for me. Yes, we are short. There is a national shortage. Berkeley County is affected tremendously by this. Uh, we are still seeking. Um, you know, it's. Here's the funny part it is um, it's Substitute Appreciation Week. And we don't have very many substitutes because they're all working. Uh, we've had to put them in in full time positions. Um, we don't. We need substitute bus drivers. We need substitute teachers. We need substitute cooks. We need substitutes across the board. Um, so, is there a shortage? Yes. Are we dealing with it? Yes. Our employees are are you know. You're, it's it's like getting blood from a turnip. We're 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 continuing to to be forced to ask our employees to, to give extra and they are continuing to do the right thing by our students but something's got to give we we have got to get some assistance um in finding employees and i think that um i, I think that your question hopefully people out there listening will will uh so will what's apply the to solution? substitutes well there, there's a variety of solutions um, okay. uh, to that the, it goes all the way back to um we don't have enough students going into education uh, in in college. We don't have and enough. And that, that's a national problem. That is a yeah. national problem, and yeah. that's just the teacher part of it. The professional uh, side of things with, you know, administration and teachers. The other part of it is, with Berkeley County growing at the rate that w rate that we are, we're we're always going to be challenged because there's there's so many jobs available. Uh, and they're and they're lucrative jobs. We've got we're thankful to have all these companies moving in, but when they come in, they have they have jobs for um, truck drivers that you know pay immediately uh, better than than what the school system is. Um, you know, same thing with with cooks and and aides and you know all of our service positions. We just need more people to be able to do that. There's pros and cons with the growth area. Um, right now, the difficult part for us is to compete with neighboring areas, um, neighboring states, neighboring counties. Mm -hmm. But even within our own county, we have so many uh, opportunities for people. It's very difficult for us to to meet that demand. The state uh, sets the school teacher salaries, and I know Berkeley County can supplement that. The school system can supplement those salaries in such a manner. Do they also set the salaries for bus drivers and uh, custodial help, uh, kitchen help? All, all base salaries are set by the state, yes. And how much can you supplement those salaries? Well, you know, there's, there's a difficult balance to that. You, you can supplement. Um, it, it really comes down to uh, your, your local share your local dollars your your you know excess levy uh things like that are are what berkeley county is able to use to supplement and you have to be careful um adding to something because you, you can't take away so you've got to be able to be able to pay these in perpetuity once somebody is once you start adding uh, the salaries. On yeah, it's not like a bonus. You right. know, it's not a we'll bonus. We'll give right. you an extra two grand this year. Right. Yeah. If you raise that. them two grand, then that is in perpetuity. That yes. is exactly right. Yeah. 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 And the legacy cost associated with that increase as well. Mm -hmm. You mentioned the local share there. We're talking with Superintendent Ron Stevens and John. You're in the House of Delegates, so you probably understand this better than most people in regards to the local share. Dale Lee, the president of the WVEA, has said that one way you can achieve locality pay is by keeping more of the local share. And the WVEA and the AFT West Virginia have encouraged the state to try to allow the counties to keep more of the local share. Can you explain what that means and how that would help, John? Yes, it is rather complicated. And, and the local share, the, 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 the uh, additional amount that they can keep, that was increased four or five years ago, right. uh, but not by enough. Not by enough. The, uh, the, the way the formula works is this. The, the state looks at how much money the county raises in local property taxes that go to schools. A lot of people think that money goes to Charleston and comes back. Technically, it does not. It, it stays in the county and goes directly to the school system. The state then has a standard dollar per student that the state says you have to spend.
And the state will then supplement that local share up to the point where it's that equal dollar per student. There are some counties in this state, I think Marshall's one and Wetzel's another, that for the, mo for the last several years have gotten almost no money in local share because they're in what I call the gas patch where all of this uh, natural gas is being drilled and the property taxes there are so much for those counties that, that they actually get more money and they can spend it all. They can have higher salaries there uh, simply because it's all locally raised money. Uh, so anyway, but if you don't raise that much money and you get the money from the state, if you go to raise salaries, uh, there, there's a penalty that comes in. If you, if you, for example, get a little bit more money from the local share, the state then pulls back some money that it lets you have. And that is the sticky wicket, as the, as the, 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 as the English uh, 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 cricket fans like to refer to it. And somehow we've got to change that. Now, Dale Lee is right about that part. I think there's another way that it can be done, which is probably simpler. And that is simply to establish a housing allowance based on the cost of housing in each of the 55 counties. And we know that every month because we get the figures from the federal government as what the, as the average home cost in each of these 55 counties is. So all you have to do technically could be done, and, and it wouldn't necessarily count as part of your salary. They do this in the military. You get your salary, but if you're assigned to an area where costs are fairly high, you get a housing allowance based on the cost of living in that area. And we could do that here, and I think you could not question the fairness of that. Well, I, th yeah. I think you'd have trouble getting the votes from other areas of the state. You know that. Well, yeah, but that's for anything. Right. You, you, for, for any way of solving the locality pay problem. I think you can make an, much more easily make the case to pe people from other parts of the state that this does not penalize them because it it's not going to raise technically the salaries. All it says is you that live in Boone County and you're, and you're paying your mortgage is $600 a month, whereas you're going to move to Berkeley County and your mortgage is $1,200 a month, we're just going to pay you the difference in what your mortgage was in Boone County to your mortgage in, in Berkeley County. And that, I think, you can use to explain that this is not being unfair. And I think you can get more votes for it. Because the way you structure it is about half the counties would get at least some extra money because they'd be over the average. And, it and the amount of money over the average you would get would vary depending on how far above the average you were. The objection I've heard from teachers on that, Ron, is that since it wouldn't contribute to their pension, uh, they thought they <clears throat> their feeling is that long term they would be getting cheated out of what should be rightfully a higher salary and therefore a better pension. Well, that's fine, and and I agree with them on a moral on on a moral basis, but. The plain truth is, I think it would be easier to achieve this, and they would be getting more money. Uh, I have John Doyle saying it's fine if we cheat teachers. He just he just said that. We've got to keep this sound. I'm just kidding, John. I, I said I agree with the teachers on this. <laughs> Our guest is superintendent. Come of on, Matt. <laughs> Uh, William Whittington on our Facebook page uh, wants to know if the county has ever considered contracting out its bus driving services. It's been done, he says, in some other counties, not necessarily in West Virginia. I don't know. Uh, but he cited a couple of examples in Maryland. Uh, it, that's always something that we're looking at. Um, in West Virginia, each county does have their own system. Um, and I, But I am familiar with a neighboring states ohio pennsylvania that that do a lot of contracting out uh, so i'm not sure that would be permissible under state law i don't know that we can do that in west virginia yeah. well that's interesting so it might not even be legal to do it that is it, it the, might the not daily, be the yeah. daily transportation right yeah now when you if you're talking about the extracurricular activities and things like that 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 has been oh yeah you can do that but yeah the, but the regular daily transportation is there's there's a different set of hoops we have to jump through for that all right, very good. Uh, I think the does the school system this year still contract buses from River Riders and uh, whomever else that has buses available? 
Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. Um, River Riders is, you see those buses on the, on the roads all the time. We appreciate their... Are you their buying any of these electric EV buses that are being made in South Charleston? You know... <laughs> We we are not at this time. Not at this time. Okay. I think you said they were three times the cost of a. Yeah, we we need three buses instead of three a bus. That right. Three yeah, I understand. As much so. Right. Okay. It's it's challenging. Has the uh, the Hope Scholarship funding has that affected in any way the funding in the public schools that you can see? Yeah. Uh, that that is a that's another tricky question. It's not as simple as yes or no, but mm -hmm. it, it has affected us. Uh, that that is money that we could we could be pulling into, you know, the school system across the state. Each each county could could do that. Um, but as students are provided with additional options, uh, they can apply for the Hope Scholarship. There are there are things that we can no longer fund because. There was a certain amount of money that would come in for each of the students that that we could count, and when they're enrolled in another um, uh, another program, a micro school or a private school or things like that, then it it does change the funding for us. Has it affected your budgeting? Not yet. Uh, we we expect that it will. We expect that it will. This it, it's still getting um, getting some traction. Do you think it will affect it greatly, or is this a an annoyance negligible amount? Right now, it's getting it's getting past the annoyance part. It's getting to the part where we're going to ha have to really put a focus on it, pay attention to it, and plan for the future to make sure it doesn't affect us. Um, I would say we're in the very early stages of that. Have you seen a drop in enrollment as a result of this? Every student that participates in that is is a potential student that could be in Berkeley County Schools or any other county in in the state. So yes, every 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 Hope Scholarship award uh, awarded is um, a potential student that could be uh, attracted back into Berkeley County Schools, and now they're now they're being offered financial um, assistance to not be in Berkeley County Schools or other county schools. But, but so. some of them would most likely maybe be homeschooled anyway. A, a number of them would. Yeah. Um, but they also take this as an opportunity to to go try something else. Um, oh sure. You have sure. to remember the Hope Scholarship. The students have to be enrolled in in Berkeley County Schools, and then go mm -hmm. somewhere else. So that's why we have to wait and see what what this is going to be. It's not just for the the fifteen hundred to two thousand homeschool students that we have here in Berkeley County in the Eastern Panhandle. Um, it's for those students who are in our public schools that are going to make the transition. Yeah, Friday, but I guess Saturday morning, I checked the high school football scores. I saw 90-something <laughs> to whatever, 80-something to whatever, and yeah. a lot of this was around the uh, Kanawha County. And the explanation I was given was that the transfer rule has gone on steroids in that area, and you, I guess a couple of super teams have been created by, well, I'm going to go to this school and... As a result, you got the haves and the have-nots. Are you concerned about the transfer rule? Forget athletics. Put that aside. Just the transfer rule as it applies to schools, classrooms, teachers available. Well, the transfer rule is a two-edged sword. Okay. Uh, first of all, it provides uh, the students and the parents the opportunity to explore what they feel is best for them. So I'm I'm in favor of doing that. However, at the same time, they will lose. Uh, you know, when you talk about a 10-year reunion, a 20-year reunion, a 50-year reunion, you know, what's happening in your community, you lose the community um, ties when students are, are jumping around. Um, I don't th – I think in the old days when there was a transfer, a student would transfer and then would be at that school for uh, for the rest of their, of their times. I think what this is allowing in people's minds um, is – an endless amount of transfer. So I'm going to be over here, and then I'm going to select. It's almost like a um, a buffet where you can select the the schools that you want to go to. And I just want to caution parents out there. Um, you know, it's the consistency, uh, it's the familiarity that your your child and the school that they attend uh, is able to build over over time that helps to prepare them 
socially after they after they graduate after they become a, a member of the community so um but like i said it's a two-edged sword this is this current rule only allows for one unpenalized transfer well is, it, is that is that correct well we're talking about multiple things here you, if you're talking about just athletics yes yes um it allows them to transfer one time to be eligible that immediate year and then it goes back to what we had before where they could still transfer as long as they're willing to set out a year um, but the current transfer rule is about transfers for every for the schools not just athletics mm -hmm. um, so there there are new transfer regulations and rules that are that are put in place for a, a school and you can transfer from school to school to school um, for the education portion of that uh, much more freely now than you could have before if if i'm in uh to uh plays acting whatever and, and this particular school has a better drama program than the school where i was do i have to sit out a year participating in plays or maybe their band is better than where i was the instructor is better do i have to sit out a year of that okay this the sit out a year part is a part of the um west virginia uh, SSAC? Uh, yeah, the SSAC. And that's the Activities Commission. We have to remember that's activities. It's not just athletics. Yeah. So any any of those areas that are governed by the Activities Commission, they would have to sit out a year. Robotics, whatever. But but they can transfer one time without sitting out a year, Once right? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Ron, good conversation. Any yeah, time excellent. time for shout outs? You got anything for I, I us? I do I do have a couple. First of all, I, I mentioned it being a uh, substitute awareness week uh, or substitute appreciation week, but it is also attendance appreciation month. And I, I would be remiss if I didn't come on here and um, and talk to you about the importance of attendance. And you know, one of my favorite movies when I was growing up when I was growing up, uh, you know, I, I was grown up when I watched this movie. Um, was Hardball with uh, Keanu Reeves. Uh, he goes into an inner city and uh, and is assigned to work with a little league baseball a group as a volunteer. He gets penalized and and has to has to do that. He builds a relationship with these people, and there's a line in there that says, uh, "90 percent of life is just showing up." And I'm blown away by your ability to show up. So I, I think that if we took that approach to school. Mm -hmm. um, and I think it's important for our parents to realize that every every appointment that's made during the day where a student is missing class, every appointment, it it, it not only has them missing class, but it sends a message to them that it's okay. And you know, we the further behind students um, get in in reading and in math and and in general skills uh, through elementary school the less likely they are to graduate with their peers. So I just wanted to focus on how important attendance was. I wanted to give a shout out to United Bank on the south end of the of the county. We had an incident that happened with uh, in the traffic circle down there. I know it's hard to believe that the traffic circles are causing some, <laughs> some issues, but we had a bus in an incident there and uh, was during one of the days that was extremely hot. And United Bank opened their doors up and allowed the students to come in. No, nobody was injured, mm -hmm. but it was um, we're required to stay on the scene. And um, sure. yeah, the students I hate stay. roundabouts. Well, uh, there's about <laughs> six of them in a row down on the south I know. <laughs> well, I just wanted to say thank you for having me today, and we're, we're uh, cranking into September. We're excited about it. We'll see you again in a couple weeks. Sounds good. Thanks. Superintendent of Schools, Ron Stevens, uh, with us here at 903.